Prey or Prey 2 depending on how you look at it, certainly feels like it's in the same vein as Bioshock, but in space rather than underwater. Prey's developer Arcane Studios actually did work on Bioshock 2, so that's probably the reason why we see so many gameplay similarities. But then again, Bioshock 2 was not the only game that Arcane Studios worked on, so they obviously put their own little twist on the formula that we know and love for Prey. Prey certainly fills a void, especially in an era of either run or gun or open world games. Prey almost feels like a crossover between Bioshock and System Shock, and that's what makes it the best of both worlds. Now the thing is with Prey is that when you actually play it and get into it, you can't really tell if it's a good or bad Bioshock clone. And after playing through Prey and all the Bioshock games, I realised that they both played very similarly. They both had the same floaty gameplay feel to them, and their narrative tones felt very similar as well. Prey does feel like a good survival horror game, and I'm not doubting that in any way. If anything, I feel like Prey does survival horror better than Bioshock. With Bioshock, it's all very combat based, where you don't really have any options against enemies, but kill them or sneak past them. I think everybody who wanted this game were hoping for it to be a spiritual successor to System Shock and Bioshock, but I feel like it works on its own two feet. Each of these titles have their own twist on the genre, and I don't think that anyone should put Prey down for not being exactly like Bioshock, but in space. Because each game in the genre, or in any genre in fact, should stand on its own two feet, and Prey really did that. The first hour of the game doesn't really do it justice however. The demo was released and I was not impressed. Everything is quite restricted when you first start the game. And the fact that you don't get all the tools until you get far into the game really did infuriate me at first, but I got further and I understood why. They do this to make you feel like you are starting to understand the situation you are in as the player and by gaining new abilities, you can start putting all of the puzzle pieces together to make an overarching story. There are certainly gameplay mechanics though that have been taken from Bioshock and many other entries in the genre. The way that Prey primarily tells its story is through what I like to call audio log storytelling, a mechanic that is also very prevalent in the Bioshock games. Prey does take its approach to this way of storytelling very differently however. The audio logs are about actual people and their lives on this space station, and not just about characters that you are moments away from meeting, as seen in Bioshock. You can hear audio logs where people are talking about playing Dungeons and Dragons, and then a few moments later you'll come across a set up Dungeons and Dragon board. And so the audio logs actually mean something, they aren't just recorded dialogue put into the game. Arkane really wanted to push a sense of realism in a grounded reality, and if I'm honest, Prey pulled it off better than Bioshock. Backtracking is a big part of Prey as much as it is Bioshock. With Bioshock you traverse the world with purpose and a goal, whether that be because it will take you to a new area that you have unlocked, or because there's a new weapon that you want, or even you want to go to a plasmid station to upgrade. With Prey, it feels more like you move one step forward and then two steps back. As soon as you do something purposeful to the story, you randomly have to either go through repetitive and maze-like hallways, or go out into outer space and fumble around with the floaty space movement. The thing is, is that Prey's map is much larger than Bioshock's, and so when you have to backtrack, it feels more like a chore than you're striving for a final goal. The enemies in Prey are great, and are mainly very slow, but also methodical, tactical, and tuned to attack you at the right time. Most of the enemies like the Phantoms and Nightmares are mainly melee based, so if you have a gun you'll be fine, but if you run out of ammo, you'll need to rely on your trusty wrench. And this again is very akin to Bioshock, where you have a wrench as your melee weapon. I feel like the wrenches in both games are just strong enough to give you a fighting chance in a 1 to 1 battle, but not when you're surrounded. 
Now Prey's Neuromod system is very beneficial for hacking puzzles and problem solving, but it doesn't hold as much weight in the combat side of things. Bioshock on the other hand has its plasmid system, which you can use its ability factor for both combat and problem solving. In Prey, Neuromods are your leveling up system, and you can either find them in the world, or eventually be able to craft them yourself if you have enough resources to do so. Your Neuromods are primarily used for the puzzle aspects of the game, moving heavy crates to create a new path, or even to hack a vault and get some valuable resources, rather than these abilities being used primarily for combat, like in Bioshock, which is a nice change of pace for Prey to be its own thing. With these puzzle based abilities, I feel like Prey skipped out on having the ability to look like an enemy and then walk past a bunch of enemies. It's just missed mechanics like this that almost bring Prey down for me. The puzzles in Prey can be quite infuriating to work out, and although it can take a bit of trial and error, they are all usually very rewarding when you finally complete them. And to find that balance with these types of things is very hard to achieve but Arcane Studios has done it very well in Prey. One very enjoyable and satisfying mechanic in Prey is where you have to work out which objects are actually mimics, because paying attention in Prey is key. If you see something move ever so slightly, it may be a mimic, even a small object like a cup could be an enemy that can knock out that last bit of health that you've got left. It's moments like these that make me realise that this game is not Doom. I can't just go run and gun. I really have to watch and listen to everything that surrounds me on this space station. And although the space station you find yourself on in Prey is massive, that doesn't mean that it's empty. Arcane Studios did a great job on making the station feel lived in in every room where there's a story to be told. You could be doing a very long side quest just by going into one of these rooms that gets you some valuable resources, or you can find valuable neuromods for completing a small puzzle. One big factor that makes me dislike Prey however is the combat. It just feels... floaty. Which makes me think that Arcane Studios wanted to make it as a last resort. I mean maybe they did this so you don't have to fight unless it's absolutely necessary, I mean, it could make a lot of sense, you're not a soldier, you're a scientist, so I think that Arcane would like to reflect that in their gameplay. On the higher difficulties however, it just feels like you're chipping away from a red health bar, which you are, but it feels like a grind and not an enjoyable one. Bioshock takes a different approach to this due to Bioshock having a more in-depth combat system alongside various ways of taking down enemies. But in Prey, if you're literally hitting an enemy over and over again with a wrench, it just doesn't really do anything for me. Some people may consider Prey to be a spiritual successor to Bioshock, but I don't see it as that at all. Yes, there are many similarities from the gameplay and storytelling, but Prey has its own twist on it all. When I was playing Prey, I wasn't thinking that I was playing a Bioshock clone. I felt like it held its own ground and implemented enough new ideas to set itself apart from being branded as a Bioshock clone. And a Bioshock clone it is not. So although both Prey and Bioshock play very similarly, Prey is not just a retextured Bioshock game, it's Prey. Thank you so much for watching this video, if you did enjoy, then subscribe and turn on that notification button so you don't miss another upload from me. So thank you and goodbye.